Yeah. I think Terence Crawford. Yeah, I'm going to go with you. Well, why didn't you say in the first place? No, because I just, I just, yeah, massive knockdown, Cole. Huge. Yeah. One of the, what you after know. all of that braggadoci, after yeah. all the fact he shouldn't have been in the same ring as him. After that fight, you just go, wow, this, this guy's going to go down as an all-time great. <laughs> Welcome to Talk Boxing, the Q&A with Simon Jordan and Spencer Oliver. Don't forget to keep liking and subscribing, but more importantly, keep leaving these brilliant questions in the comment section below. But Spence, let's get on with answering these bloody questions. <laughs> right, Big Mac. Big Mac, love Which it. looks like I've swallowed a few of them by the way I'm going. <laughs> um, Big Mac kicks us off. What's the best atmosphere you've experienced in the UK for a fight? 2005, Ricky Hatton versus right. Costas U at the AO Arena. Say. Um, yeah, say. it was that was insane. Mm. It was that just yeah, that was just something something else. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, I was gonna say I, when I was a kid, um, I I went to the um, Hagler Minter fights, wow. which was a very different kind of atmosphere yeah. because obviously Minter got beaten up in three rounds and Hagler got bottled out. And of Hagler ring, yeah. got beer cans and yeah, bottles yeah. and God knows what else thrown at him. But I think it's difficult. I mean, obviously we we've seen fights with Frank Bruno where the atmosphere was electric. Mm. Um, I think the the fight against Oliver McCall, well, yeah. but I wasn't at that fight. Yeah. The fight that I was at, that I saw the atmosphere in, was. Well, I think. Uh, yeah, I think, I think there's Zoo. something said about that AO Arena, the old Manchester Arena, where, where it's twenty thousand people and just the atmosphere when it's in there, like on Saturday night with the Eubank um, Junior and, and Liam Smith, the atmosphere in there was just insane. When it's packed to the rafters, the atmosphere is insane. But there was something special about that with Hatton because. He was going into the unknown. He was stepping up against a pound for pound champion at the time in Costa Zoo. Mm -hmm. Hatton was a massive underdog, got hurt early in the fight, and you thought he ain't gonna do this, but he showed unbelievable balls hung in there and turned it around. And what do you think yeah, of the atmosphere? And it was two o'clock, two a.m., wasn't it? Yeah. At that time as what well. What did you think of the atmosphere? The atmosphere became electrified in the first Frotch Groves fight. Yeah. There was an atmosphere building, but it didn't quite have the same resonance until George Groves knocked him down in the first round. And then the environment just went. Whoosh. Yeah, yeah. Because no I was at that fight. No, that was that, that was yeah. insane. Yeah, because yeah. no one expected it, and uh, he didn't just go down, Frotch, did he? He was, I mean, he was out before yeah. he hit the floor. How yeah. he got up, I still, yeah. I still don't know that. And how he survived those couple Properly of rounds. Properly knocked down, Carl. Yeah, massive knockdown, Cole. Huge. Yeah. One of the, what, you know, after all of that braggadocy, after yeah. all of the fact he shouldn't have been in the same ring as him. That's it. Giving it a large. Must have been a daunting moment. Oh, well, I think. But, it, yeah, but the I think hitting the floor as hard as he hit the floor yeah. woke him up. Yeah, that's where he was at. But what about the atmosphere in the Frotch Grove second fights? I thought that was great as well. Yeah, I thought it was insane. I don't I, think George should have come in on a bleeding bust, do you? No, I, I think he, he stretched mm. it a little bit there. Yeah. AJ versus Klitschko was a, a massive night as well. The atmosphere there was incredible. Ben versus McClellan. I wasn't that. that was, I was that, at that, that fight. Yeah. That was a proper atmosphere yeah. as well. There you anyway, go. up and onwards. Um, Eduardo, Eduardo is up next. Are you boys going to watch the Ricky Hatton documentary? I well, am, yeah. Yes, I was. When I get a bit of time. I mean, Gabriel you, you, Byrne. You, yeah. um, no, not Gabriel Byrne. It's a bloody actor from Usual Suspects, isn't it? <laughs> Gabriel Clark <laughs> okay. is the guy that produced that documentary. And right. he, he was going to send it to me last week to Sam Have you seen it? No. I haven't. But I've seen the trailers for it. Okay. So it's going to be an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, it's going to be. He's going to. I mean, Ricky's had an incredible journey. Yep. You know, his rise and his fall, really, in many ways. Mm. You know, and, and, and well, he, he looks in, he look he feels like he's in a different space now because I saw him a couple of years is, ago. Yeah. I think I saw him um, uh, when when, when Amir Khan fought Kell Brook in Manchester. Yeah, and he wasn't in a good state then. Yeah, and I think he was sort of in a sort of yeah. a bit of a state in the, one of the hotels, and I saw him well, trying to get a cab. And I'm it, thinking, it, think this is a guy hotel, that could. Yeah. This is guy. This is a guy that you was a hero in Manchester. Is now sort of trundling down the road it's on his own. On his yeah, own. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was quite sad, really. Like I, I remember that night actually, and. Um, yeah, it's sad, but I, I think he's he's been an incredible fighter, uh, Ricky Hatton, and like I say, like a he, he seems like he's, in a, he's in a great space right now, yeah. which is really really important. And mm -hmm. and the documentary, I think, you know, touches on the well, it'll take mental it. health I, problems. And I imagine it'll go through the whole yeah. journey because I mean, the remarkable support that he had, the the level of support that he had from the fans that didn't just go and watch him in Manchester, yeah. they travelled around with him. You, you have to go back to like the days of Barry McGuigan and people like that to have mm -hmm. the fan base that Ricky got. He's a great guy, by the way, Ricky, mm -hmm. as well. And like you say, the journey and, and the struggles after, after yep. life after boxing, you know, losing losing your identity as a boxer and becoming a normal civili civilian again. Rich, Ricky's really struggled with that. So I'm just pleased to see him where he is right now, but documentary will be great. 
okay, I find myself in the territory of having to regale, regale the world of one of these names. Slick Rick is next. <laughs> um, would Floyd... Do you reckon Pat puts those names in for fun or what? I don't know. Pat's hardly ever here, is he? Oh, no, yeah. Um, Romario, maybe. Would um, Floyd... Romario wouldn't do that to us. No, he wouldn't. No, so... he, he treats this particular broadcast with the prerequisite okay. amount of respect, doesn't right. he? Um, would Floyd Mayweather have beaten Terence Crawford? Didn't we have this one the other week? Did we have this one the other week? I don't think we... I think we might have discussed it amongst yeah, ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Would, or you might have shouted it at me. Beaten, so it's a tough one to call that. A very tough one to call. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Really, it's really, it's too, too tough to call, I think. That's one of those ones. But that's that, not much of an answer, is it? Yeah, it's people, not really. The fellas, but, Slick Rick, I would say, I would, is sat there and thought about contemplating that, this question what? and he doesn't give want me, some... No, some give, load, give, I think Terence Crawford. Yeah, I'm going to go with you. Well, why don't you say in the first place? Then? No, because I just, I just wanted to, yeah, hear your, your, your version. Oh, really? Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm the knowledge in the room, am I? Based on what, by the way? I just think that stylistically, I think yeah. power-wise, I think um, the, the the sheer ability that Crawford had so, would give give Mayweather right. a whole raft of problems that other fighters haven't been able to give him. Mm -hmm. And I just think that Crawford is at that level. I think they're so evenly matched that I think there's such margins in it that Crawford just has that additional extra. We may not have seen the best of Terence Crawford yet, even at this, this stage of his career. What I'm saying mm -hmm. is, the manner that he eased through El Spence, you go, there's, there's still me. What do you think of that rematch? That? What do you think of that rematch, by the way? More of the same? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, come on. That was, that was, that was so one sided. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was in second gear. I mean, I can't see that. Yeah, I think he showed there. What I've got. That's what I'm saying. Before that fight, if you'd have asked me that question, I would have gone Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. But after that fight, you just go, wow, well, this, this guy's going to go down as an all time great. And I think there's still more to come. Um, so I elaborated on that question a little you've bit. You've done okay I? after not having any answer whatsoever. Yeah, pretty, you've decided yeah, to have an why, answer. Though? Do you know why? Because I, I haven't me. even seen the questions. I still haven't seen you know, Well, what's that got to do? I haven't seen the questions so either. I, I need time do, to do think, Do you need mate. to see the questions to give an answer? I don't even recognise oh, that we, got that. we haven't got that much time, have we? Megastar asks, and this is for me, and I don't see necessarily that it's the most intriguing of questions, but I'll answer it. Simon, did you see Conor Ben at the fight in Manchester? If so, did you try and speak to him? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Um, I saw him sitting... I didn't see him. I didn't see you, to be fair. Why don't you ever come over, by the way? I don't particularly like you. Well, that's not... And if I wanted someone to run around getting me that. drink... Well, I, I, give us a better answer these people, are, these people appreciate authenticity. You know they I mean? believe in honesty. I'm starting to... Yeah, start Believe to, it. Yeah. yeah. If I wanted a drink, I'd have sorted you out. I'd have said, where is Spencer? Can he run off and get no, me? No, I was busy uh, working though, so... Yeah, what, you know. what version of it? Um, <laughs> it's a, it's a I, I, I saw Connor. Um, I saw him on the outskirts Did of the... Did you actually connect eyes? I, I, was watching, I, I, was, I saw him. He saw me. I don't particularly... He's particularly interested in me. I'm not particularly interested in him. The issue with Connor Ben is I really like him as a boy. I've had nothing but respect for his career so far, albeit I think he needs to step up and, not, and uh, move on to different levels of fight. I'd like to have seen him fight a David Avanesian. I'd like to have seen him maybe fight a Keith Thurman or, or mm -hmm. one of the Garcias yeah. rather than rather than, rather than rather than veering off into the territory of Chris Eubank Jr. for a legacy fight that gets everybody paid. I understand that's the nature of the business. Mm -hmm. um, I'm tired of this ridiculous narrative that somehow people like you and I have got a problem with Conor Ben and that yeah. we want him all, we want him hung, drawn and quartered. Nobody wants that at all. Yeah. I don't like the crap that came out of his father's mouth about the idea that you and I have in some shape or form um, and talk sport as a matter of course mm -hmm. and another agenda also being fueled by Chris Eubank Jr that because you tell people things they don't like to hear sure. then all of a sudden you've got an agenda all everybody's wanted is Connor to just clear his name and then everybody can go thank Christ for that mm -hmm. off you go sure. and so I saw Connor uh, doing a couple of interviews with a couple of the, um, the YouTube guys with their very low numbers that they Try to get us to help them with, um, <laughs> but uh, but no, listen, no, I've got no reason to speak to Connor. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's got no reason to speak to me. Yeah. Um, finally, JJ, and, and by the way, Connor should speak to people like us yeah. because he should have the courage, yeah. his conviction to say, "What's this about?" Because the thing that these people keep saying, the Just Connor Benz of the world, and his dad keep saying is feelings rather than facts. Mm. Nobody said anything derogatory about your son. They just asked your son to clear his name. That's all we, that, and that is, that is the point. And that's what I'd like them yeah. to do, but, yeah. but, but I'm not going to lose any exactly. sleep whether they do or I, they don't. I, I, I've done an interview saying, listen, you, that you think there's an agenda for me and Simon about talking about the situation. Come on and prove it instead of just keep but they throwing don't. it out there. They, anyway. they don't because don't, they can't. Right? Another time. Um, and they can't, not because they can't, because physically they can do what they want. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of a structured argument, they cannot go into a conversation um, uh, with me or with you and mm -hmm. point 
to the where we've been Machiavellian or where we've been malevolent or where we've been unfair or where we've been untrue or where we've been castigating. All we've said is prove your innocence. And that doesn't suit their argument. Yeah, but sure. anyway, up and onward. You asked a question, Megastar. That's an answer. Um, and finally, Jay, Jay asks, are you, this is for you, you can answer this one. Go on. Are you expecting a lull? I mean, how can, in the heavyweight, I mean, how much more of a lull can we f have? Are you expecting a lull in the heavyweight division after the current crop of top fighters retire? Um, no. No, I'm not. We well, need to substantiate yeah, that because no, you've got, if you lose Fury, if you lose Fury, you lose Joshua. There's a young crop of fighters coming through as well. So, Such as whom? Um, you know, you, like your, you know, your British champions, Fabio Woolley's, you've got your, you know, well, Joe Joyce will be gone then because he's, he's older as well. But yeah. I just think there's a, a young crop of Daniel, fighters. Daniel Dubois Daniel still got Dubois. lots of legs in him. He's still, like, what's he, 25 years of age, Daniel? Mm. Yeah, so like, you know, he's going to be around for another 10 years. I think he will. You know, he'll, he, he'll still But it doesn't look rich, does it? It doesn't look rich. It doesn't but, look rich. But we, we always get that question, like, you know, about the next generation. Of and there's always the next from. generation. There's, there's yeah. always the next generation. So I don't think they'll be allowed because boxing's growing as a sport. Mm. And that's why I think that we'll be all right. That's it for this week's edition of Talk Boxing, the Q&A. Don't forget to keep liking and subscribing. Keep leaving these brilliant questions in the comment section below. Next week, Spencer won't shout. I'll look forward to seeing it. Or maybe week, you did right? well, actually. Got the volume just about right. And we'll see you next week.